Special. Ali Sherman presents stars of the National Football League. This week, Jimmy Brown, fullback of the Cleveland Browns. Bill George, linebacker of the Chicago Bears. Fred Thurston, guard of the Green Bay Packers. Roger Brown, tackle of the Detroit Lions. And Jerry Kramer, guard of the Green Bay Packers. Hello, and I'm Bill Cullen, and you probably wonder what I'm doing with all these illustrious football people. Well, I think it can be explained rather easily. All my life, I've been a rabid football fan, particularly National Football League professional football. And I'm here as a fan and to represent you fans out there. In other words, if I think a question pops into mind, uh, my mind, I'll hope it does into yours, and I'll ask it. Now, to lead us along the way, all our players here are all pro material, each and every one of them. To lead us along the way is a man who's been head coach of the New York Football Giants for three years. In that time, three Eastern Division championships and twice Coach of the Year. I mean, none other than Ali Sherman. Hi, Ali. Bill, what do you got for us? Well, uh, we've got these all-pro football players, and uh, I'd feel pretty good if I could keep them here. Mm -hmm. And we've got films of these men, Bill. This is going to be a treat for me, too. It has been looking at these films. They're special films that are focused right down onto each of the men in their positions. Normally, uh, our coaching films, and uh, any time the fans see the ball game, you see 11 against 11. There's 22 people out there doing war. Mm -hmm. It's offense against defense. But these films, again, now have been focused on the man and done in slow motion so that we can get into some of the detail and uh, some of the real good moves. Along with that, we've got some pretty good authorities to talk about this stuff, and that's the ball players themselves. I'll say you have, Ali. And as Ali said, these are not the kind of films that you might have seen before, or coaches, or players, or anyone else. They're taken especially for this particular show. And commenting on the films, in addition to Ali, as they go along, will be the players who were involved in that particular sequence. So, Ali, if you go get your bag of tricks ready, I know we're all anxious to see it, and we'll see you again in just one minute from now. Allie, what do you got for us? Well, you know, we've just been talking about war, and uh, actually, it isn't that violent a term. Uh, football, basically, is um, the offense trying to move the ball against the defense, the defensive people trying to take it away. But we've got men that combat each other, and I think these films will show it. Let's take a look at some of these films. We've got some shots of Jimmy Brown first, and uh, we'll go through these things. Uh, We'll have them stop right here for you to show you just where the play is going to take effect and also talk a little about uh, the different moves. Right here now you have Jimmy Brown on your screen. He's going to take a pitch out from the quarterback going to his left. And as you uh, see the play evolve, you're going to see that tackle out in front of him, his offensive tackle, making a block for him. And Jimmy is going to dip. As he comes out here, he's going to dip in to help that tackle make the block. These are the things that make a play. It's the ball carrier. And it's that man in front of him. And of course, then you got the Roger Browns and the Bill Georges trying to pursue. Let's take a look at that and see just how this thing goes. This is the Browns now with uh, a pitch out play going to the left. And we'll see that ball come right off. There's Jim now getting the ball. Here he dips in to set that block up on number 55. He puts a burst of speed out and comes out and around. And Actually, it looked like uh, where he was going to be tackled at first, he went off for about 12 or 15 yards, and uh, that's pretty nice stuff. Pretty nice stuff, Jim. You like those, don't you? Oh, yes. Whenever I can get that tackle out there free and ahead of me, uh, I think we're going to get a little something. Jimmy, uh, do you gauge your moves according to the defense, or do you know it? You have, if you go on left, you got one tackle out in front of you. Does one get out there a little ahead of the other? A little well, yes, ahead. you have to know your personnel. You have to know your blockers. You have to know their habits. You have to know their speeds and their assignments in order to uh, take advantage of all the opportunities that are presented to you. I try to uh, study my men. I try to work off of them. If I take advantage of everything they do, then I will usually have a good day. What would you do uh, with a man like old uh, Feston here? You think he might get out in front of that thing? <laughs> well, they say that I could do a great job behind the Green Bay line, but uh, in all due respect, I think they probably do have the greatest line in football, but I still would have to take my line because I'm used to them and I know them, and I might not do anything over there. Uh, I'd like to arrange right. to get you to Green Bay. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't mind. Oh, we wouldn't mind uh, we, either, Coach. Oh. We'd, uh, <coughs> we'd take the Jim I think Jim would do pretty good without our tackle out in front of him. We found a way to stop him in Chicago. Yeah, how's yeah. 
Well, we uh, let him go by, and then we get four or five to jump on his back from behind. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually true, Coach, uh, what Bill was saying about the runner making the blocker. A runner can make your guards or your tackles either look great or look like bums, really. And if you get two people that work together, then you've got a nice combination. Uh, Jim, I think a question uh, as a fan I might have uh, of you as a ball carrier. Let's assume that everything's executed perfectly out there in front of you as far as the guard or tackle being ahead. You should suddenly, now this might sound naive because I've never played the game, you suddenly see a hole somewhere else. Perhaps it's sprung up by accident or something, but it's way inside of where they are. Is it perfectly all right, or would you hear from the coach if you decided you thought this was a good hole and you made a fast cut and went through it <coughs> well, all by yourself? If I was a rookie, in answer to your question, well, if I was a rookie, uh, I think that I would go on and do what I was supposed to do. But mm -hmm. uh, after a while, after you're in the league, uh, uh, so many years, you establish yourself as being a pretty smart fellow so that the coach will go along with you in uh, situations like that. I will usually take the first hole I see mm -hmm. uh, because sometimes even though the original hole looks like it's going to open perfectly, uh, someone pursuing might catch you. So in certain situations I will take the first hole that I come to. In other situations I might hesitate uh, mm -hmm. depending on the down and so forth. I guess then Jim is pretty much like anything else. The coach uh, will go along on your know-how and your experience and figure you're going to make do things right more often than you're going to make mistakes. Is that it? That's exactly right. You have to keep a runner loose and he mm -hmm. has to make decisions on his own. I see. Here we go right up into the middle. The tackle is just about to get into you. And as we move along, there it is. You break his arm. There's the linebacker. He has just been shed by it. And you, I don't know what you use, but you made it go. And there's that veer taken away. And you're in real good shape. If you put that arm on target, you might have been down to the post. You saw it just go by the head. It should have yeah. stopped right on the jaw. That's right. Well, <laughs> we can't all hit all the time. How do you feel about that when you're out there, Bill, and you've got a ball carrier that's moving to the side? Any special thing that you think of that you won't get at? Well, the only thing is this. Uh, a, a ball carrier like Jim Brown, any tackle you can make on him is going to be a great one, especially in the open field. Uh, especially with that stiff arm of his. Uh, perhaps a lot of people didn't know, uh, didn't know this about Jim, but he's got a terrific stiff arm. He's got a great forearm, too, when he has to use it. And uh, it's our contention, uh, any tackle, I believe, is on Jim Brown's a great tackle. And Cross did make a terrific tackle on the open field on him. That's right. All right. You don't see stiff arms in our league too much anymore. You don't see those ball carriers use it. I, I don't know why. But, uh, well, it's very do. difficult, Coach, to, to use the old-fashioned stiff arm because... Uh, your tackles come up too quick. You can't get the full extension of your arm. Now you'll see a lot of the forearm because it's shorter and it's much quicker. You'll get a chance to get it between you and the tackle and break his uh, power, more or less. That's right. Well, here's a shot we got coming up, Jim. Uh, we're we're going to show that there are times when a team has a chance. This is to build the confidence of all the rest of us up. You, it's a good game, but uh, actually we found out the secret. And when they see the film, we'll know what the secret is. Let's take a look at this. Jimmy's going to take a pitch out now, coming out to his right. He's going to come out right out here, take that pitch out, and then come up the field. Come up the field, and we'll see what happens there. All right. Here's a pitch out from the quarterback. He starts up the field. He comes in, and bang, two defenders. We found the secret, fellas. Not one, but two. two. Double up. Huh? Jimmy, I have a question again. I noticed when you took the pitch out, when the quarterback let it go to you, instead of the... I always assumed the ball would spiral or come reasonably flat over to you, but it was almost a slow, uh, soft, end-over-end -end, uh, pass to you. Is that the way you prefer to take it? Well, that's the way that our coaches uh, teach it. I think it, it is probably the best way, although some of the other coaches teach the spiral. Mm -hmm. I feel that the end-over-end -end, uh, pitch out is much better because it gives the back a chance to juggle a ball if it's not on target. Uh -huh. The spiral, in, in, in any case, has to be on target. I feel that uh, uh, the soft pass is direct enough to get there fast, yet it gives you a chance for error. And do you have a particular height at which you like to receive the ball, eye level or chest level? or? Well, yes, uh, just about uh, stomach high and uh, out in front of me, not uh, shoulder high and behind me. This is a very difficult catch. You have to practically stop to get back That's there. That's right, and you'll never get outside like that because wanna, you'll have to break your stride. Want to try? Uh, Want me to try a pitch out? Difference there? between the spiral and, All right. uh, the, and the flop? Sure. I haven't done this for a lot of years now. <laughs> I've never done <laughs> this. Right. So this go. is the spiral. Right. You might see, might see a difference as the ball comes. 
Yeah. Hey, now here's the one that Jimmy prefers. It's that end over end. Hey, it's probably the one I'll think. blow. No, by golly, I did <laughs> pretty good. It you was noticed. easier to catch. I had more ball. That's more right. Surface. You had more yep. surface. Exactly. I did that. Exactly. Oh, I understand. Now all I have to do again is learn what to do with it. Now that I hear it. Run. <laughs> uh, we have a, a shot of you, Jim, done in slow motion, where you come out on a right end run, out to here, and this is going to illustrate what we mean by power. Further up the line, we're going to show the run in its continuity first, and then we'll come back and stop it and show just how you have that drive. Let's go now on the film. There's an end run right, and of course this is, uh, what, Jim, 232? Did you play that last year? About 230, 232. That's what you all say. As the, let's take off on that film now. We'll see Jim come out at 200 and what we think is 240. They put that <laughs> 232 in the program, but uh, we're not misled. There's a beautiful cut. He breaks two or three attempted tackles, finally gets hit, but lunges forward. And with this, we're going to come back now and do this in slow motion and stop it at the point of contact. And we will be able to show with this whereby Brown gets stopped, and after he does get hit for the first time, with that extra little lunge, gets an extra four yards. Let's see it go right now on the film. Here we go. In good shape here. Makes the cut. Breaks one tackle. Another, another, gets hit right here. Now, in football, and I'm sure everybody knows, this, uh, that first stripe ahead of uh, the three ball players right there is a five-yard line stripe, basically. Jim's being hit between two five-yard line markers. That means he's two and a half yards between those two, five, those two lines space at five yards. Now, let's see what happens when we put this film into motion and where he finishes up. He's been hit and should be tackled. Actually, he's halfway between the next two five-yard line lines. That's a five-yard gain after a man gets hit. How do you do it? <laughs> That's <laughs> well, a pretty question, general you know, question, isn't it? Well, actually, a ball player always tries uh, to fall forward. This is one of the main, uh, well, one of the basic things that he should try to master. And uh, I think all coaches teach that. Fall forward when you hit, get as much as uh, possible. Yeah, I notice Jimmy falls forward and hits and then seems to squirt about another yard or something like that. That's something else I guess you developed through your career. You mean once I'm on the ground? Yeah, you just seen I don't know. I don't want to take that rap. Hey, Ali, we got, I don't know if you noticed the play set up here. We got one set up we thought you might enjoy. Ali Sherman, head coach of the New York Giants. This time it's against the Giants. Oh. And I want you to notice how Ali has his defense prepared for this. Everything. All right, now you can let it go any time, and here's Jimmy in a pretty well-known run. I don't remember this being prepared for the show. What did you do? <laughs> no. What happens there, Allie? <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> oh, I remember this one very well. Look at him make that cut back. Boy, that's beautiful. That's as fine a piece of running. It walks 10 yards. <laughs> yeah, walks yeah, it always, like, it always <laughs> walks in the line. It's fine. He kind of teases you out that's there. That's the part that hurts. <laughs> it was quite a play in any, any way you look at it, Jimmy, and a beautiful run. And I think maybe what we ought to do along about now, Ali, is take a little bit of time out and give you a chance once again to reset your defense for that. And we'll be back with all of you just one minute from now. A little while ago, we were discussing about how a good ball carrier can make a guard look good or how a good guard can make a ball carrier look better. Suppose we go over to Ali Sherman again, because I think he has something along those lines to point out to us right now, Ali. Well, Bill, um, here's a, a play which will demonstrate good running and execution by everybody, good running by the back. But if, uh, if the people will uh, focus on number 64, Jerry Kramer, the right guard, and watch him as he pulls out to his right. This is going to be an end run coming out here to the right. And watch Jerry lead the ball carrier. He'll be leading that halfback, and up the field, about 10 or 15 yards up the field, he's going to throw a very key block to help put that ball carrier into the end zone. Let's roll it and take a look at it. Here we go now. Watch 64, Jerry Kramer. Here he comes out around the right, leaps over the pile, and now, bang, he makes that block. And that gave that ball carrier just enough running room to uh, put it in there. Jerry, you don't look around to see where that man is when... Uh, you no, Ali, I haven't, haven't got time. Had a little difficulty getting out of the hole there. I, I had to leap over that one uh, defender. But uh, as soon as we turn around the corner, we head for the first jersey we, we can see and uh, try to... Not so much anymore when we go downfield. We don't throw the cross-body block near as much as we used to in the past. Actually, I went to, went to the ground there, but what we try to do now is to actually run over the person and stay on our feet. 
there was a poss possibility of throwing another box. That was one of the very few touchdowns we scored against the Bears last year. <laughs> a little difficulty on that line. One point, Allie, that I'd like to make, uh, I guess the reason that uh, Jerry Crane was considered uh, the outstanding guard in the league. What was that? <laughs> you got it right. You got it right. 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 Got it The agility. Uh, there are very few guards in the league that will be able to uh, jump over a man, regain his balance, and continue to stay ahead of a ball carry and then throw a key block. This is something uh, that is really That's outstanding. Right. That's right. Yeah. Tell me, Jerry, what are your weaknesses? I mean, uh, how can a <laughs> defensive tackle easily get around you? I ain't telling enough... you nothing, Roger. <laughs> He's had enough experience with me. <laughs> hey, again, again, as one of the, the typical fan type who, again, as I say, don't know the intricacies as you guys do. While, while uh, Jerry was pulling off from his right position there, going, what were you doing over there, Fuzz, on the left? Seriously. Well, I was uh, cutting off for what we call the offside tackle and trying to keep him from pursuing over to get the play. I see. And uh, the tackle on our side, the left tackle, then pull and led the play where I normally would pull and lead the play. And had it gone the other way, uh, Jerry would have done that, and you would have. Right. If it had gone, gone left, uh, Jerry would have cut off the tackle to stop the pursuit, which is, uh, uh, came along so well and uh, is so good in our league that uh, you have to cut off this pursuit if you're going to get around that end. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, that was your 49 play, wasn't it? <laughs> Don't tell him, Fuzzy. Huh? Don't tell him. <laughs> 49? Ask Bill George. He knows all that. No, what their, what their, number was that? I believe Bill? that was their 59 play. Only one guard came out there. Oh, all right. All right. Check out on that shot. <laughs> well, let's go to another shot now. This is, uh, we've talked about running and uh, blocking. This is pass blocking now. And uh, right here, if you'll focus on the left guard, number 63, Fuzzy Thurston, yeah. the right guard, number 64, Jerry Kramer. Their responsibility is to protect the passer as he drops back against these men here up on the front defensive line. Their responsibility is to uh, get right up into them and try to keep them from penetrating into the passer. Let's take a look at this. Uh, Roger, you can criticize us for technique if you want to. Here they go. Here they go setting up and picking their men. And you notice that these men stay right between the passer and that rush man all the time. How's the technique, technique on that one, Fuzz? Roger. <laughs> oh, wait, well, we asked Roger. We're not asking. We want an objective never, analysis. never bothers me. Just, <laughs> he gets the job done. That's the main thing. Yeah. Uh -huh. Don't get blocked. And sometimes you get good technique, sometimes bad technique. With me, all of it's good. Coach, we've got several kinds of blocks. I think one of Fuzzy's favorites is a lookout block. Maybe we're oh, talking about yeah, that. Just, you What's you a lookout know, coach, block? Uh, well, a couple of years ago, we played, uh, played the Lions, and, uh, and we didn't have too good a day, as you recall. We were kind of beaten quite badly, and... Uh, Roger had a lot to do with that at the time. In fact, I made him famous, if you recall. <laughs> and we were riding uh, back to the, uh, to the plane, uh, taking the bus to catch our plane. And uh, Jerry and I are sitting in the bus and we're talking about, uh, about the game. And Jerry said, well, he said, we accomplished one thing today if we didn't accomplish anything else. He said, we got a new bl block in football. And I said, what's that, Jerry? He says, well, he says, it's a lookout block. He says, you know, we got the cross body and we got the shoulder block. He says, now we got the lookout block. I said, what do you mean, Jerry? He said, well, every time Bart Starr went back to pass, you turned around and said, look out, Bart, here he comes again. <laughs> Me and you, Roger. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, let's take a look there. at the next scene. And this is uh, one that uh, got a little running in it. Uh, we see Fuzzy now coming out. He's going to lead the back on a pitch out. And you'll see Thurston now, uh, number 63, coming out to his left. He's going to lead the ball carrier. And when he gets outside, he'll run about uh, seven to eight yards there will be two defenders coming up there, and he's going to pick those two defenders off as Jim Taylor, the fullback, cuts off his block. Let's look at it. There's uh, Thurston now coming out. He's leading the play, and as he turns the corner, there are the two men. He runs right up into both of them, and it enables that fullback to cut right off of that block. And that's not bad. That was a well-executed play, Fuzzy. Allie, just about everyone else. Well, we have a lot of other things in different departments. We've uh, seen uh, and heard from the ball carriers, the guards. We have some more of uh, the guard situation and some other positions. Uh, give us a little while. We'll be back in just one minute from now. Allie, what are we going to concentrate on now? Let's take a look at a shot. And this shows just what a defensive tackle in the league has to go through. Uh, normally he's stationed opposite uh, one of the op uh, offensive guards. He's positioned right there before play and when the ball is snapped, if it's a running play, he's going to meet the block of that man and take care of his primary responsibility. 
and uh, then try to go to the ball. Now, if you'll focus on number 76, Roger Brown, right here, and watch this. We'll run it. This is uh, quick speed right now. We'll run in continuity, and then we'll get back into it with some slow motion and see just what uh, Roger has accomplished with us. Hey, these are the Cleveland Browns against Detroit. Roger gets up into the block, and he moves down the line. And as you see, he's the last to arrive, but he's the uh, clincher arriving there because he's handled that man blocking him. And uh, it takes power. It takes uh, good work with your hands. And if we look at this in slow motion now, and again, focus on Brown, number 76. And as the ball is snapped, you'll see him come up into that block and work his way down. Let's see it. Here's Brown now, right up into the block. Watch him fight that man off. He works his way down, taking his man with him, and boom. That's you carrying the ball, isn't it, Jim? Yes, it is, unfortunately, Allie. <laughs> Roger weighs quite a bit, you know. Did you know when Roger arrived at the scene? I always know when Roger arrived. <laughs> I, he's similar to uh, the late Big Daddy Lipscomb. Uh, whenever they arrive, you know it. Uh, 300 yeah. pounds or more. Yeah, yeah but I, uh, I hear uh, he's on a diet, though, now, Jimmy. Who's on a diet, Roger? Roger's on a diet. What oh, yeah, I've lost about uh, 40 pounds already. I'm finally down to about 300 pounds. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, you're going to be a week, week 300 this year. You're going to play him at 300? Thanks. Thanks, <laughs> <laughs> He says he can't handle anything over 290, Roger. That's what he's telling me before. And he says, you know, that Brown, if they got him down to uh, what a mere mortal should be, like 290, I think I can handle him. Did you say that? Uh, I don't recall exactly saying it that way, Coach, but if he gets down to 240, I'll do a better job, I'm sure of this. Huh? Well, if I get down to 240, I think I'll change positions. Okay, I'll go <laughs> for running the football. <laughs> ah, God. Anybody can play on offense, Rod. Right. It takes real hey, brains to play say, on what defense. what do you mean that? All you got to do is be able to <laughs> hey, Raj, get a ball and run. Raj, it looked like when you were getting into that man, you had, that takes a lot of power and all. There's a special technique you well, use. Why, how about coming up here and showing us something? As far as said he can handle you, I think I'd like to see you two yeah, next step. Yeah. Take a, let's take a look at uh, his rush against you and what, uh, well, a def uh, an offensive guard and what your first moves are, what you're trying to do. Well, the main thing on that particular room move here? was uh, a slide. Usually if the play is going around end, right or left end, the main thing is to stay in front of your man and uh, not to run around him, just to slide through his head and slide to the plate. This is easy, Coach. It's the best job I've ever done. On <laughs> did, he, did he hurt you on that? Congratulations, no, no, Bradley. No, no. Congratulations. Well, thanks, do, you, do you try to do anything special? Do you go right through him or you try to straighten him up or what? Well, the main thing is, that, is to try and straighten him up a little bit and then to check his charge. And, mm -hmm. uh, and yourself stay low with your feet firmly planted and try and keep him from in, getting into your legs and uh, uh -huh. slide to the plate. And just keep those hands out. Keep there. the hands out. Let's see, what it once in a while. Let's see what it would look like in, in uh, fast speed. Go ahead yeah. and joke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> give it a full go. No, this is, <laughs> don't talk <laughs> like that. <laughs> well, all right. Let's take a look at the next shot then. And uh, we looked at defense. We're going to go one more time to offense, though. And this is blocking by a back. Well, let's take a look at this in slow motion now one time. And you'll see just how this thing sets up. As the film rolls, it's going to go left. Right to their left, and you'll see the block made again by Petrosani and Danny Lewis coming off his block. Great block by 89 here, Coach, the left That's end. That's right. There he is right up in there. That's Petrosani, 33, and the back comes off. These things happen pretty fast out on that field, but uh, right here you can see uh, those backs just made. Jim, do you, do you wait for his block on something like that, or do you slow down ever or accept the special times? Well, actually, you start, I, I usually start out at full speed, uh, shift down to about three quarters, look at the blocking situation, watch my key block, and then shift back into high gear. Well, all those right. gears. That's just like a nice truck. Oh, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> all what do you gears. got, Bill? Oh, <laughs> <that's laughs> well, actually, playing with Mitchell for three or four years, that's the terms that we talked in, uh, the shifting of the gears, going from one speed to another. And you have to have different speeds to be a runner first. Yeah, but the trouble is your three-quarter speed is a lot of people's top speed, though. <laughs> and uh, we'll be back with you in just one minute from now. Well, uh, Allie, what do you have scheduled for us for next week? Well, Bill, next week uh, we're going to get up in the air a little bit and take a look at uh, top receivers in the National Football League, uh, top passer and defensive backs. Receivers like Bobby Mitchell here, number 49. Great speed and a fine pair of hands. Watch, watch him make this catch now. Yeah. 
And uh, I don't think you can say lucky, <laughs> because that was a real fine catch with a man in close pursuit. Along with Bobby, we've got Tommy McDonald of the Philadelphia Eagles, number 25. He's got a lot of experience. He's got the good speed, but he has a good feel. There's a deep drop defense, and he cuts right into that hole. And his pass was able to put that ball in him. And one thing about little McDonald, he's a former halfback, real fine runner, too. And we got a man that can throw to all of these people, and that's going to be a man that I think is one of the top quarterbacks, all-around quarterbacks in the National Football League, number 19, Johnny Unitas of Baltimore. Here he's running a draw play, quarterback draw play. Sometimes we like to see him do that more than pass. <laughs> you know, the ball doesn't go quite as far. <laughs> and uh, with these men, the men who catch it and the men that uh, throw the ball, uh, two top defenders, Dick Lynch of New York football giants and a uh, man who's long been one of the most consistent and uh, best of the safety men in the league, Yale Larry of the Detroit Lions. Mm -hmm. This is war. These are the men who throw and catch, and the men who have to stop, and we're going to talk to them again and uh, show these film clips and uh, see just how, how it all ticks. A whole new version of offense and defense with these special films of yours, huh? Well, I hope so. I think we, uh, we enjoy it. And it, again, it uh, sometimes gives you a few ideas when you see these men so close together. Well, I've learned a lot, and I hope I can learn as much next week, and I'll be here looking in. Oh, incidentally, may we say once more a very kind thank you to those who helped so much today. Fuzzy Thurston. Thank you, Bill. Jim Brown. Thank you, Bill. Jerry Kramer. Thank you, Bill. And over here, Roger Brown. Pleasure, Bill. Bill George. Thank you, Bill. Alex Sherman. And for me, Bill Cullen, thank you, and we'll see you again. Bye. <laughs>